mm. bred in Cardiff. And as a non-stipendiary minister, I would not be expected to move across the country to exercise ministry. There is an expectation that I have a day job which supports me. I have the option uh, during the week to be much more flexible over my time. So I have started uh, developing a ministry with local funeral directors and that work uh, is paying me something. My main focus is with Bethesda, which is a small chapel in Tongwinlais, and I'm working with them as a transitional minister. Uh, and I'm primarily focused on two other churches in Cardiff, my original home and sending church, City URC, which is in the city centre, and Beulah URC, which is in Rubina, and uh, that's where I spent the last two years of my ministerial formation training. And I'm helping them set up and run transitional ministry teams for themselves. So I found myself last summer uh, poised for ordination to ministry. And uh, remember very much in my final year um, writing an essay at college on the anniversary, 2017, a hundred years since Constance Coltman had actually been ordained. And here we were actually coming through General Assembly, uh, giving permission to churches to register for same-sex marriage. And I really felt that I'd come home. I actually thought that uh, the call to ministry had passed me by and that finally I was safe. So many people said to me, well, only do it when you absolutely have no choice and you can't get away from it anymore. But from time to time over the years, I did go to vocation conferences and I remember coming home, uh, going back to church one Sunday morning and saying to a very close friend, Jean, it's an absolute definite no yet again. And she just simply looked at me and said, well, go again. The church had gone through a process of launching a commitment uh, around human sexuality. And for the first time ever, there was a tacit acknowledgement that there were at least three levels of understanding within the United Reformed Church. Three almost seemingly irreconcilable approaches to hum the question of human sexuality. But I felt that there was room within that to operate and that I could go forward in all honesty and integrity to pursue a call to ordain ministry. As someone who's been in a same-sex relationship for the last 28 years, 11 of which have been in civil partnership and two and a half of which have now been in formal marriage, uh, you would probably not expect my theology to be other than in the more liberal wing of the church when the Christian path is seen as utterly unique. It is often seen as suspect. But when Jesus incarnated on the path of life, the path has credibility and relevance to other people. And the best way in which people can relate to the good news that we offer. For I find within the Jewish tradition an opportunity to touch base with tradition as a springboard for moving forward. Islam reminds me that God is ultimately unknowable. Buddhism shows me how to deepen an understanding of the value of meditation and the process of sitting quietly. And I rather feel that there is a little bit of Christ in everything. It took a fair amount of time and there was an awful lot of interviewing and an awful lot of preparation around academic study just to see if I was up to it and that was actually quite a challenge but I'd been working as a self-employed lawyer for many years so I was able to free up time uh, but it comes at a cost inevitably there is a cost to ministry but then I think that's part of the challenge of seeing whether it is right for you I chose to go to Manchester and to Northern College because of the part-time learning option and the fact that I could do most of my work at home and Manchester Northern College operates a contextual learning uh, understanding of formation training. So a lot of my work would have been on placement in the Cardiff area. And then I would spend certain intensive weekends at Manchester in learning huddles with other people doing much the same thing.
So began the process of this regular trek from Cardiff to Manchester on the train, working there uh, on the train up and working on the train back, and feeling quite exhausted, often giving myself Mondays off to recuperate. My advice to anyone exploring the call to ministry, or a potential call to ministry, is to spend time with yourself, with God, in prayer, quietly, and also to look further afield, to see how other people respond to the idea that you might have a call. It's essential that you share concerns, ideas with other people, both at the local church level and wider, because the call to ministry is not your call to ministry, it's a call to ministry within the church. And it's very encouraging at times when you begin to doubt yourself along this road, to know that the church has said, yes, explore this call, we will do it together.